So we can use this root and independent voices uh, method of uh, yielding polyphony. There is also one other um, uh, quite useful polyphonic device that Max offers, um, and it's called Poly Tilda. So um, this is a kind of MSP version of the poly object up here, although it's, it offers a great deal more than, than that suggests. Um, what it does is, or what it can do, is to combine the functions of this object and this object and all of these objects all in one. Um, I'm not actually going to do that because I, th there are certain circumstances in which I find that it um, causes problems from doing that. So I'm going to use a slightly different implementation from that, but one which does, um, uh, it, it, you know, it, it does work and it does... Um, reduce the kind of screen clutter if you like and it um, and it also enables you to have uh, quite a few voices uh, if you want them um, so without having to actually make them physically so um, in order to do that what we need is to modify these uh, voice patches again and there's only a small modification we need to make but it's an important one um, the poly object uh, is an object which is a kind of host for these other um, patches that you make. Um, but for some reason it requires a different type of inlet and outlet than these fairly simple uh, graphical ones that we see here. What I need to do is, and it also distinguishes between max input and MSP input. So I need to put in in one. That says that this is an inlet and we're calling it inlet number one. And that means, as it happens, although we're not going to do this, that uh, the poly tilde, uh, the, the, um, uh, the abstraction, can use um, any number of uh, inlets um, and you could have them in any order. So although we might have in one here and in four over here, or in, uh, maybe I should change that to in number two, um, then in one would still be on the left hand side and in two would still be on the right hand side of the um, of the inlets that are shown on the um, the patch when they appear sort of in, in the, the host patch. But anyway, as I say, we're only using one inlet and in fact one outlet for this. But again, because it distinguishes between MAX and MSP uh, messages or signal, um, then we need to differentiate between non-tilde and tilde uh, being the in and out. But we could make we could make a, um, a, a max a sort of control output which would be out without a tilde and then uh, the number of the outlet that we want it to correspond to. So there that is. And once again, if I save that, then that will be applied to all of our. Um, our abstractions and that means that I can make my poly object which I will do poly tilde then I need to give as an argument the name of the uh, abstraction that I want it to call and then I need to give the number of voices I want it to be able to contain so I'm going to put in five because we have five uh, voices allocated from our poly non-tilde object up here. So if I do that, the relevant inlets and outlets appear. And if I double click on here, then we get voice come up with a little bracketed one. Now this is because we only need one poly tilde object and it will contain all five of our, what are called instances of the voice abstraction. And I can call different instances of that by sending um, a, an open message, sorry, so I need to unlock that open message and the number of the uh, instance that I want to open. So if I put open three, then it pops up with voice with three in brackets there. So that is the third uh, instance of our, um, of our abstraction. So it's a bit like me deciding with this bottom one under here where it's got a bracketed one to open this voice 
and with this one here where it's got a bracketed three opening this voice. Okay, they are separate patches, they're just contained within the same object and kind of layered on top of each other if you like. So that means I can actually dispense with all of this and simply use, I'll get rid of that, simply use our poly tilde object. The problem is that we don't have any means of getting the information to the appropriate instance of that voice abstraction because there's only one inlet here. So what we need to do is to send it a particular message to tell it which instance to go to um, so that it so that it plays or stops the appropriate voice. And we're not going to do that using root, we're going to use that using do that using a particular message, which is target and dollar one, comma, dollar two, dollar three. Now why have I done that? Because when I click on let's uh, uh let's make this Here. So this is going to reveal or display what pack is sending out. And I'll put another one just below the target object as well. Or target, sorry, target message here so that we can see what's happening. So if I press um, middle C, we get out of here, as we remember, um, a voice number of one with the note number and the velocity. Actually, that's not going to help us, is it? That bottom one there. Never mind, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what's happened in a minute. Um, if I press another note, then we get a voice number of 2, um, 64, and then 38. What's happening here, maybe I should have sent it to the print message. Print, uh, sorry, print uh, the, the max window, sorry. I'll do that. So I'll get rid of these for a minute. Um, there we are. So if I click on middle C again, then we get 1, 60 and 38, so voice number 1 and uh, a velocity of, uh, sorry, a note number of 60, velocity of 38. Uh, when I release it, we get the note number, the voice number 1 again, 60 and 0. What's happening down here is that the various items in that list that are coming into this message box are being replaced. Uh, or, or replacing the dollar one, dollar two, and dollar three. So first of all, we'll get target dollar one as one part of our message or one message, and that's what we get down here. So target one, which tells Polly to refer or send any subsequent information it receives to target one, and then it sends that information. So sixty and thirty-eight, um, which is what this dollar two, dollar three is for. Um, so we always know that depending on which voice number we've chosen or which is chosen by the poly object, it will always go to the appropriate target instance within the poly tilde um, object. And, and so of course we also know that any note off information is also going to be sent to the appropriate target. So that should work. Now once again, because I've reinitialized or I've completely uh, initialized from scratch the poly object, none of the, the sawtooth thing that I had up here will not uh, work. So I need to resend it and now it works. And I also need to maybe jiggle these a little bit so that they, incidentally, the, interestingly, the sustain, because we're currently on sustain, the sustain changes the, the uh, loudness. Um, of the, uh, the sustained portion of that note, interestingly. Um, and uh, if I, once I release the notes, obviously they stop playing. So it's all working, just as I wanted it to. Um, and that's the poly tilde object. Um, so I'll get